so that you can stay young and healthy. Well, think of it this way. What's the most important part of your body? Wait. Heart. Before you answer that, would you agree that the most important part of your body should be the most well-protected part of your body? Is that what you agree with that? Yeah. That if it's not important, it's not going to be well-protected. But if it is important, Hi. it'll be the most well-protected. How many agree with that with a show of hands? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Show okay, your beautiful. Hands. So, what's the most well-protected part of the body? Your heart. Your heart? Yeah. It's protected by skin, muscles, maybe some fat, rib cage, fascia. But that's it. I can puncture quite easily. Right? With a butter knife, I can puncture it. <laughs> okay, so that's, it is well-protected, but not the most. Good guess, though. You have, a, you have a headache? You have a question? The head, the brain. The brain. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Yes, it's the brain. Right? It's protected by a motorcycle helmet up here. And then what? Spinal cord. Protected by what? Fakarat. That's not a swear word for those who don't speak Arabic. Vertebrae, right? They protect the spinal cord. So we know that the brain is protected by the skull. The spinal cord is protected by vertebrae, fuck it up, because it's the most important part of the body. Now, why did it make the spinal protection, the vertebral column, why didn't we make it one solid steel column of bone instead of 24 individual bones? Flexibility. Why did we do that? Flexibility. Why is it broken up? So it is flexible. Exactly, so you can have flexibility. Can you imagine, this is a catwalk, can you imagine if I walk down the catwalk with a solid column of bone, it looks something like this, right? Imagine that, imagine being able to, you wouldn't be able to twist or turn or bend. And so that's why it's broken up into 24 bones. So we have flexibility. But here lies the problem. Because to gain flexibility, we also increase the risk of vertebrae moving out of position. And when these vertebrae in our spine move out of position, it interferes with the flow of our electrical fountain. And so we're less than 100%. The electricity is decreased almost like you'd have bad internet connection at home. So the body, brain wants to talk to body, body to brain, and the internet is reduced. Yeah, the, the, the flow is reduced to some level, and so you run into problems. And we know that if it's, if it's uh, affected in this part of the body, it's going to affect the neck and arms. If it's a little lower down, the heart, the lungs, the liver, every part of your body is innervated or is given life through your central nervous system. That's why this is such an important fountain of youth because if you can keep your spine young, you can keep yourself young. And that's why the yogis say you're only as old as your spine. So what, here's, before I was going to say what, what kind of problems or what kind of issues cause spinal problems, what kind of things in life cause our spines to be young, to, to wear down. So how many have heard of tooth decay before I go into that? Tooth decay. Everybody, right? Yeah. Show of hands. Who has heard of spinal decay? Very few people. Yeah. Well, guess what? Every human being and every animal that has a vertebral column, these bones sticking out here, has a decay or wear and tear process, except for two animals. There's only two animals on the planet that have young spines from birth to burial. In fact, they die because of something else, not because of spinal problems. What's the first guess? Guess none. Fantastic. Snake. Snake. Snake is a very good guess, but it's not the right answer. Jellyfish. <laughs> Imagine, this, their spines last forever. Imagine your car lasted forever. When I speak at schools, I imagine kids, imagine your toys lasted forever. They get all excited. What was your guess? Turtle. Turtle. Okay. Let's put that on. Let's park it. Who's got another guess? Crocodile. Crocodile. Now that's, okay. Just think about it, right? Marine animals, that would be a really good guess because they're buoyant, there's less gravity in the water, less effect on their spine, less load. So that is a very common uh, guess. I'll give you a hint. Well, first let me tell you what all of your answers have in common. The turtle, the snake, and the crocodile. Reptile. They're all wrong. Okay? The first animal that has no wear and tear of the spine, from birth to burial, flies. 
Surprise. Come on, shout out your answer quick. <laughs> Mosquito. <laughs> Are you? Flies. It flies. Yeah. Okay, it has wings. It's not the bird species. Good guess, though. It's the bat. Yeah, bat. Ooh. Yes, Batman. <laughs> has a spine that lasts forever and Catwoman, too, maybe. <laughs> um, so, that's number one. The second animal, I'll give you a hint, is very slow moving. Slower than a turtle. Snail. It has to have a vertebral column, though. <laughs> so it's a sloth. So the bat and the sloth have nowhere to tear their spines from the time they're born until the time they die. We don't know why. Is it because they move slow? Is it because they hang upside down? In the case of the bats, we're not really sure. So what can you do to keep your spine from wearing down? First, what do you think causes the spine to get to wear down or causes spinal decay? Calcium deficiency. Carrying heavy things? Okay, yeah. So I'll put that in the category. Let's call that trauma. Yeah? So carrying heavy things, falling down, slipping, right? Boom, got one. Excellent. The first chiropractor 100 plus years ago, 1895, said he called this category traumata, which is trauma. Nice. What's another reason? Malnutrition. 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 Yes, that's what he said the second one was. He called it toxins. So for sure. So we got nutrition and we got trauma. There's another one. There's a big one that you might be so obvious you forgot it. It's big. Posture. Posture. Do you mind if I put that under trauma? I'll call that micro trauma. Yeah? Like the way you use your phone, the way you use your computer, the way you sleep, the way you sit, right? The way you drive, the way you lift things. That's called micro trauma or repetitive stress. So we got trauma, we got toxins, and we got one more. Trauma, toxins, and a big one right here. You gotta go up a little higher in the body. Inside the coconut thing we we're talking about earlier. Mental stress. Oh. Not physical stress, mental stress. Wow. That's probably the biggest one. You know, my first year when I graduated as a chiropractor, I opened my clinic in Toronto. And my father, I'll just tell you a funny little story first. My father walked in and he said, son, I'm very proud of you. I'm like, thanks, dad. I really love what you've done with the place. I'm like, thanks, dad. He's like, but it's missing one thing. Habibi. I'm like, what's that, dad? He's like, patience, this place is empty. I said, dad, you gotta give me time for people to find out about what chiropractic is. And we were surprised at how many people really didn't know what we are and what we do, and how many people don't know what spinal decay is. But in my first year, what I noticed is most people didn't come in because they lifted up a heavy suitcase. Most people didn't come in because they were using their computers wrong and then hurt their neck or their pillow's not right, or because they, were, you know, they had malnutrition or weren't eating good, or because they put on weight and that was stressing their joints. Most people came in because of... Stress. Yes, stress. In 1967, the Ray Heen Holmes, um, two psychiatrists, studied over 5,000 medical records, and they listed all these common life stresses, right? And if you look at the top 10, in every single one of them, relationships are there. <laughs> that is the stress number one stress. I, mean, I have a saying that says, nothing stresses people more than That's other why I have to go to sleep at 10. people. <laughs> Bingo. So this is how the spine wears down from these three things. And you can see that it applies to every one of us, right? I can listen to him all. There was a study done in 1926 at the University of Pennsylvania. And this doctor asked the question. He said, Chiropractors claim that by taking care of this part of the spine, you can help with heart problems, and this part you can help with lung problems, and this part you can help with stomach problems, right back, and all this kind of stuff. So he's like, how about we look at people who already died, dead bodies, cadavers. We know the cause of death. We know this group over here died of heart attacks, and this group over here died of lung disease, and this group over here kidney problems, and this over here stomach issues, and pancreas, pancreas issues, and that kind of stuff. What if we do an autopsy study and see what their spines were like. Here's what they found. This was published in the New York Times, 1926, University of Pennsylvania. What they found was this group of people who died of heart attacks, every one of them, was 220 structures that they looked at, humans and animals. And in what percentage of the people who died of heart problems do you think had spines that were not healthy? 
or what we call kinked or convex. They weren't straight. What percentage? 50? 90? 80? 100? <laughs> okay, maybe there's a relationship between the heart and the spine, but it can't be related to lung disease, can it? They did, they also looked at that, and in the, let's say, 25 people that were, that were, you know, were uncovered, what percentage of them had unhealthy spines in the area where the nerve goes to the lung? Nerve. 100, good guess. So your guesses are starting, the numbers are going to probably start going up when I ask you the next category, right? <laughs> so kidney disease, 100. Stomach, 100. Gallbladder, 100. You name it. It was a 100% correlative study. And when I speak at medical conferences, and there's a group of medical doctors in the audience, I would usually get someone that says, hold on a second. There's a counter argument, and they're right. These people over here that died of heart disease may have, it may have been the heart that kinked the spine. Would you agree that someone can have a heart attack, fall to the ground, and the falling and hitting the ground can lead to a vertebra going out? Trauma. So it's the heart that causes spine to kink, not the other way around. True. So you know what? I'll give you 50% of the cases. I'll give you 90% of the cases where organ causing the spine to go off, or be, or to, you know, to be unhealthy. Now the question is, who do we check? Whose spines do we check? Everybody. Yes. So when do you think the first checkup should be? What age? Newborn. <laughs> Newborn. Child? Newborn. Newborn. Why though? What could, they're not on the phone. They were, there's no mobile in there. They're, right? There's no mental stress but when a kid's a month old or day old. When they're inside the womb. There's no malnutrition in there. They're connected to mom via the umbilical straw that feeds them. Yeah, if the mother is stressed, it comes... Mom's stress translates into baby stress. That's a really good one. Yes. But the real first spinal trauma is going to be in the birthing process itself. C-section, manual delivery, forceps, vacuum, all that stuff sometimes puts upwards of 100 pounds of force on the neck. It takes approximately 120, 150 to decapitate. That's a lot of force. And if the force is not completely symmetrical, if there's a hand that's pulling more than the other, one way or the other, I delivered both my kids myself to make sure that I was, you know, that they were safe. Wow. They were safe then, but they're not safe having me as a dad. <laughs> but once the baby is, you know, once the baby comes out, again, the process of delivery can cause trauma to the spine. That's why we believe, hey, check a baby at birth. And then, there's varying opinions as to when the next checkup should be. Every month, I say probably six months would be the next checkup. Okay, minimum at six months because now you got breastfeeding on one side more than the other. You got changing the diapers, lifting up the legs more one way than the other way. Right? These things can add up, especially if there's. A, this is assuming there's no trauma, right? No fall or anything like that. I do know kids have been dropped. So, and then when the baby starts to stand and walk, that would be the next checkup. You didn't see it over there. Because now the baby's going to start falling on one cheek more than the other cheek. Yeah. Right? So again, you can cut the, the spinal problems. Then that's at about a year. Right? Depending on whether it's a male or female, usually girls walk a little younger than men. So thereafter, a consensus around the world, if you ask uh, what we call preventative care chiropractors, wellness-based chiropractors, would be to check the human being once a month. To check your eyes once a year or once every two years, check your teeth once every six months, and six months, and then check your spine once a month. That'd be a good minimum number. The profession, my good buddy is the chiropractor for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and American football team. And these guys get, a, they get checked and adjusted probably on a weekly basis before and after practice, right? Because they want to be the best. Many high performing, performing uh, athletes are under regular care. So, I'm going to stop talking because I can go on forever. That's pretty much it. That's my message, is that the spine is so important, it wears down, it might be related to organ failures, so it's important to be checked. 
and support to be checked on a regular basis from birth to burial. When we can't help a patient is when they've reached what we call end stage, when the two bones, because they've worn down so much, they've welded together, or they've fused together. At that point, we can't treat the spine. We can't loosen the vertebrae. They're stuck permanently. That's where my father was when I checked him when I was 23 years old. I went to see the chiropractor. I fell in love with this concept that the body can heal itself, that the body has a fountain of youth. The fountain of youth is your nervous system. Free these vertebrae, free the nervous system, watch the body heal itself. I fell in love with that. I was sold. We all went in for checkups. My brother, my sister, their families, their kids, my mom, my dad. And the only person that we were not able to help till this day was my father. Because when he was checked, he was at end stage, some call phase three, phase four, where the bones actually fuse. And my dad's dying words were haram. It's a shame that people don't know about this. And the only reason why I had to leave my family on a Friday to come here, which I'm very blessed and feel honored to do, by the way. And for you that are hearing this for the first time, it's a shame because our professions are not as rich as the pharmaceuticals. That's why we can't get on major TV, can't get on radio, you're not gonna hear us all over the place. You're gonna hear the, the message of drugs and the message of medication. The pharmaceutical driven brainwashing that the body is somehow weak, inherently weak, and you need to be dependent on drugs. No. So, who has the first question? <laughs> yes, do you have a mic? Do you have a mic floating around here? Just speak, if you could stand up so I don't hear you if you mind. And I'll repeat the question. How do you protect your spine? Yeah, we were just talking backstage with somebody. Number one, the first thing you can do is reduce weight. Because approximately every kilogram of weight you gain is gonna to lead to four kilograms of stress on your knees. So we know that weight stresses joints. So that's the first message, is reduce your weight, get to your ideal weight. In fact, I've written a book on nutrition. It's called Etology. And what we talk about is the idea in life is to get to your ideal weight and stay there for life. Minor fluctuations are natural. One kilo here, two kilos here is natural, right? You know, you have an injury and you gain a couple kilos or you, you don't go to a bathroom for a day or two or you, you go on holidays and you eat a little bit more. You know, you're gonna go up and down too. But there's people yo-yoing. I'm talking like 10 kilos over the summer and then they lose it over the year. And then it's another 10 kilos next summer. It's up and down, that's stressful. So that's the first way. The second way, I'll give you guys a quick thing you can take right now. If you look at this young lady right here, don't change anything you're doing, okay? If you look at this young lady right now, see, she's holding the camera up because she's videoing, right? This is how you should be using your phone when you're checking your messages. You should be literally, okay, I'm just gonna see if anyone called. I'm gonna literally bring it up like this. It should look like I'm taking a picture because you'll avoid the chin tuck, which will save your spine, okay? A little tip. Also, if you could all please just stand up for a quick second. Everybody, please, even the, the guys videoing and gals, it's all right. Come on, stand up for a second. Beautiful. Okay, there's more of you than I thought with the light. I couldn't see you all. But um, the idea here is that every 20 to 30 minutes, you want to be standing up. Because as soon as you stand up, you take the weight off the spine and you put it on the legs. It's a good way to burn calories too when you're standing up and walking. The future is going to be standing up in the office. It'll be standing workstations. And all you got to do is stand up for a minute. You can, Please make it. All you need to do is stand up for a minute. You're driving to Dubai, it takes you an hour, let's say, if you're going really fast, an hour and a half. Stop at the 20 to 30 minute mark. You don't have to stop for an hour. Stop, get out of the car, like my dog used to do. God rest his soul, little, little guy. He used to get up and he would walk around my, the, the couch and then he'd sleep again. Every so often he'd get up and walk around and sleep. That's what we need to do. If you could just walk around the car, just for a few seconds, good to see you. You know, that would be a good thing. If it's not the summer, you know, if you can't, if, let's say it's the summertime, you can't get out of the car and, you know, because it's hot, it, it's a volcano in this country in the summer, right? <laughs> Although this year, maybe not with all the seeding of the rain happening. All you do is just put your seat back, stay in the car, pull over and just put your seat all, seat all the way back so you're at, you know, as close to a flat as possible. That'll reduce stress on your spot. That's the second thing. So the first one was nutrition. The second one was traumata, now stress. Mm. Mm. I could do, I could speak literally for, I'm not joking, eight hours on this subject. Because stress is a big one. Yeah. If I was to give you one thing, one little thing, I think I'll give you um, this one suggestion. Increase your tolerance to cold. No. 
I was one of four people this morning swimming at the team beach. The, the, the temp and listen, I'm telling you, take it from someone who was afraid. I grew up in Toronto, Canada for 30 plus years. I hate the cold. I'm scared of the cold. No one is more scared of the cold than me. <laughs> me. <laughs> and you. <laughs> so what I did real quick is the way I started swimming, it was 19 degrees, it's not even that cold, but it is quite cold for someone who's not used to that. I go to pools at 26 degrees at the officers club, be too cold for me. I paid for a membership, didn't even use it. So I would just, when you're taking a shower every morning, at the end, for the last 10 seconds, turn it to cold. Then 20 seconds, then 30, then 40. My mom's a senior, she's you know, 70 plus, and she's doing this now. That was the one thing I would recommend for your mind, because if you go wake up in the morning and put yourself in an uncomfortable state for a few seconds to minutes, whatever someone throws at you throughout the day is going to be a, a step down from that. Trust me. There's nothing I can experience that I didn't experience this morning. It's gonna hurt me more than that cold water. Swimming one kilometer, that when I came out, I was freezing. You know, so that would be my three three little kind of tips. Okay, guys, how to use your phone, stand up for posture, reduce your weight for nutrition, and cold, uh, cold exposure to awaken that you know resilient part of your mind. Did you have another question? You were saying something? Yeah. Just having a checkup once a month. How long is the checkup? How long is the checkup? What does it evolve? Yeah. Okay. So, a checkup is simple, right? So first thing we can do, do you want me to demonstrate the checkup? Yeah, yeah. who would like to come on stage? Okay, you, but I hate to, you can't video me anymore. You've been videoing the whole time. <laughs> Amazing, come on up here. I don't know how you, is it stairs? Perfect. Okay, good for you. All right, welcome to the catwalk. Room around for What's your name? Maria, can we give Maria a hand? All right, uh, Maria, can you face this way? And then, yeah, just take a couple steps back. Okay, yep, right there's good. Okay, let's get perfect. So guys, the first thing we check is shoulder height, right? So I'm gonna put my fingers on a bone right here on either side. You can feel like I'm pressing the same point on either side. And you see, can you guys see straight ahead? Can you see they're quite even? Yeah. You can see that, right? Many times we do a checkup and it looks like this. Yes, thank you, that's perfect. Yeah? So the shoulders can be off. How do the shoulders reflect, how does that tell us about the spine? Well, I'm just gonna stand just real quick to get a back view here. You can see if I do this, that this shoulder is lower, which means the spine is curved this way, or kinked, what we call scoliotic to one side. That's the first thing we do. The second thing, can you please face them? After, excuse me, face me, face me to <laughs> your back. And just take a step closer so they can all see you. And then I want you to put both hands just here behind your back. Okay guys, if you see here her, her um, shoulder blades, Okay, so these are the shoulder blades. They're almost perfectly even, right? This one might be a teeny little bit lower. Usually you're right-handed. Yeah, usually right-handed people have one a little, it's usually lower on the right side. Shoulders usually lower on the, on the dominant side too. So that's the second point, right? Okay, the third one, if you can just bring your arms straight ahead just like that. And what we do here is we go right to her pelvic bones. And you can see right here, again, they're even. Thank you so much. Welcome. All right, guys. So what I would do if we had a table is then I would lie her down and I would see if she's carrying a short leg. I had one patient say to me, I said, just need to check this if you have a short leg. And I said, doctor, please, don't waste your time. I said, why is that? I said, I have two short legs. <laughs> He's a short guy. So, um, so then we check the legs, right? Then what I would do is we would go bone by bone, all 24 bones. I had an amazing patient come last week. He was as white as snow. Oh. And so when I had his shirt off with his mom, he's about 16, I touched each bone. If, every time I touched the bone, it turned red. Oh. And then white again, right? So I literally just went like this on all the bones and I released at least eight of them and released. And you could see them perfectly lined up. It was amazing. Wow. Then we had some fun. I started playing the piano a little bit on his, on his <laughs> But so that's the other thing we do. That's checking for alignment. And that's just one part. An x-ray and an MRI would fall under that part too, which is structure. But the spine is not all about structure. You can have really good structure, but you also need to have good what? Function. I didn't hear you, but function. Yeah, I want to make sure the spine is flexible, it's moving, right? Because you can be perfectly straight, perfectly lined up, but the spine doesn't have the right flexibility at some part. Yeah? 
whether it's the neck or the low back or the, or the mid back. I hope I answered your question. What is the next question? Yes. There are some that they said when some people do like this because they are asthmatic. Is it true? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, you could be asthmatic and you could be scoliotic too. So you could have a scoliosis and be asthmatic. The question is, is that what's causing the asthma? I'm not sure. Because if the person's curved in an area that's un that doesn't relate to the, to the lungs, maybe not. Because you can have a scoliosis lower down, you can have it mid, you know, in the mid area, not necessarily in the upper area where the nerves feed the lungs. So not necessarily, not necessarily. Yes? Sure. Huh? My question about spina. Let's go another the so hung. Now I'm going to repeat your question. She's saying that, you know, what if your shoulders are even but you're rounded? Your shoulders are rounded. There's a, I'll kind of tease out the different, uh, unpack what you said because there's several things. The first is, does that mean your spine is curved? There's two kinds of curves. There's the good curves, which is the curved neck, the curved low back, and the curved mid back. And then there's the lateral curves that we're, that we're also talking about, right? These are the ones that you, that you worry about. The other curves are good when you have it in the neck and low back, but the upper back, if you're curved forward, we don't want that. So rounded shoulders are usually, not necessarily, but can be indicative of what we call hyperkyphosis, where it's increased forward curvature, or hunched curvature in the spine. Sometimes the spine is okay, but the shoulders are curved because of stronger muscles in the front and the back. So it could be muscular, it could be spinal. That's why it needs to be kind of checked. Does it cause back pain? Not always. It can, but I mean, it depends on at what stage of the, of the disease, if you want to call it that, or dis-ease you're in. Because initially, maybe not. But if it's been going on for years, the body at some point might say, hey, I've had enough. The muscles in the back can't, you know, can't fight these ones in the front any longer, so they need to be strengthened. So a lot of what we do is about balancing muscles too. You know, for example, I was swimming in the sea this morning, um, and I was doing butterfly, which is a tough stroke, and I had to learn to do. I couldn't, and I started, I couldn't even do one. It was like, just felt like it was impossible, right? And then I watched some Navy SEAL videos, and I learned how to do two, and I could go for a while. Um, I do that specifically to avoid that. Because as we, not the round, not necessarily the, the, the leveling, but more about just keeping the back strong so you're more upright. I could be more upright, I'm working on it, you know? Um, but I uh, hope I answered your question. Who's got the next one? There. Yes. Properly. So the question is how to use your mobile phone properly. So I'll give I'll repeat one tip I gave you. The first thing, I wish I could show it. Can somebody can you come on stage for a sec? And then, do you have a water Hello. bottle? Can I just grab a water bottle? Huh? Even if it's used, it's okay. Good to see you. Thank you. Can we give him a hand please? <laughs> can you please lie on your back? I want you to lie on the ground. It's okay, it's, we're just playing the carpet. Just, just sit down and lie on your back like you're sleeping. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys a magic trick, okay? This is as good as it gets. Put your head down. I'm gonna slide this water bottle under his neck. You know like those, um, those uh, magic tricks where they put a sword down someone's throat all the way down? It's kind of like that. Can I get a drum roll, please? That's great. Keep your head down. Don't move your head. You see it coming out this side now? Yes. Can you believe it? Yes. Unbelievable, right? Give him a hand, please. <laughs> Come on up. Well done. That's as talented as I get when it comes to magic tricks. Okay, now let me let me tell you what, where I'm going with this. So you notice that when he was lying on his back, there was a curve right here. Look up, look up. There was a curve here, right? Can you just turn around for me? Keep going. There's a curve here, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, just hold right there. So, when you're using your mobile phone, 
If he was to lie down again, I'm not going to trouble do that. Right, poor guy. But I mean, if he was to lie down again and I asked him to bring his chin down, you would hear this. Right? Yeah. Because the curve in his neck would go away and he'd be straightening it. So, face that way again for me. So, when you're looking at your phone, do you have your phone with you? Hold right there. This is how most people look at their phones, right? Yes. They look down. And the problem with this is you lose the natural curve in the neck. You see it on x-ray. You see a good x-ray like this, and then you see someone with a straighter spine. So the secret is to bring it up. This, you avoid the chin tuck. Yeah, no, no, no. The chin should be parallel to the floor. No, no, no. Like that, okay? Thanks so much. All right, um, I'm at a time I just want to let you know that I'm so grateful for this opportunity. And once I come out from backstage, I'll be at the Canadian Medical Center booth. If you guys want to come with questions, I'll be happy to uh, answer any more specific ones. Yes, thank you. Oh, uh, I hear we have a free consultation happening over there. Is that what, we'll, we'll work out the details when you join me at the booth. Thank you so much, everybody.